Thank you for joining us as we intend to pro provide some updates and what is arguably the most heinous crime that our city and our police department has handled. Um, again, thank you for being here. Um, just wanted to start off by letting you know that I do have a press packet for you all. However, we did suffer a small internet out outage, um, so I was not able to complete it for you. Uh, I will send that to you once that is done, or once we are done here. Uh, today we'll have speaking Chief of Police Bill Evans, E-V-A-N-S, and also Deputy uh, Chief of Will County Sheriff's Office, Dan Jungles, J-U-N-G-L-E-S. Also in attendance, we have City of Joliet Mayor Terry Darcy and Joliet City Manager Beth Beatty. And lastly, we have in attendance uh, Will County Coroner Lori Summers. Um, however, she will not be speaking. Uh, without further ado, I will introduce uh, Joliet Police Chief Bill Evans. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Bill Evans, Chief of Police, City of Joliet. I wanted to begin by thanking our assisting agencies that played a very significant role in this investigation. Our federal law enforcement partners, including the United States Marshals Fugitive Task Force, the Texas Rangers, and local agencies in Texas, the Will County State's Attorney, CAC, the Will County Sheriff's Police, and obviously the Joliet Police Department. This incident has had, had a tremendous impact on the city of Joliet. It's had a tremendous impact on my agency, both mentally and physically. Our officers and detectives worked tirelessly throughout the night in early morning hours to advance this investigation. As you are aware, yesterday afternoon, the JPD was summoned to the 2200 block of West Acres. It was quickly determined at that time that two homes on that block contained a total of seven persons who were all shot to death. Through our investigation, we are now comfortable saying that this multi-victim homicide occurred Sunday afternoon. When our officers arrived, this was no longer a fluid active scene. Shortly after, we were confident that the offender had fled the area and was no longer in Will County or the city of Joliet. Our detectives worked quickly and identified a suspect in this matter and disseminated that information to media outlets immediately in a very rapid fashion. As you are aware, that sub subject was Romeo Nance. During the course of this investigation, we determined that a three-year-old boy was unaccounted for, and we quickly located that child with a relative in a nearby community. Shortly after 9 p.m. last night, we were notified by Texas law enforcement authorities and our federal partners that our subject, 23-year-old Romeo Nance, was killed by a self-inflicted gunshot wound after a brief confrontation with law enforcement. We have confirmed the victims in this case were of a variety of different ages. Inside the residence, at 2212, there was four females, aged 14, 16, 20, and 38. There was also a 38-year-old male at that residence. All were deceased. At the address of 2225, there was one female, aged 47, and a male victim, aged 35. They, too, were deceased. I want to remind everybody this is still a very complicated and active investigation. We are still relatively limited in how much information we can provide, but we will continue to get as much information to you in a timely fashion when that information is available. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dan Jungles. I'm a deputy chief with the Will County Sheriff's Office, and I'm going to give you a brief synopsis of what has occurred thus far involving the Will County Sheriff's Office. On January 21st, at approximately 4.27 p.m., deputies with the Will County Sheriff's Office were sent to an address at Pheasant Run, Pheasant Run Apartments, uh, located off of uh, Pheasant Run Road and Route 53 in Joliet Township. While deputies were en route, they were advised that there was a man found bleeding from the head for an apparent gunshot wound. 
Deputies located a critically injured male, later identified as Toyosi Bakari, age 28, of Joliet, who was originally from Nigeria. Deputies began to perform life-saving efforts on Mr. Bakari um, at that time. He had a single gunshot wound to his head, which entered through, his, uh, through the left portion uh, near his eye. It is believed that the weapon used in this incident was a 9mm handgun, but further confirmation is needed from the Northeastern Illinois uh, Regional Crime Lab that the Will County Sheriff's Office uses. While deputies were uh, securing the crime scene, they were informed of another shooting that occurred in the city of Joliet, and that was located at the 200 block of Davis Street. The victim reported to, uh, to Joliet Police Department the suspect vehicle in that incident was a red Toyota. Toyosi Bakari was transported to St. Joseph Hospital in Joliet where he succumbed to his injuries. Our hearts break for the Bakari family and those that have been affected by this senseless act of violence. Once detectives and crime scene investigators were on scene, it was clear that robbery was not a motive to this. Money was found in the area near where Bakari was located. Detectives learned that he had exited his residence in, a, in an attempt to purchase some cigarettes at a lo local gas station. Uh, video surveillance recovered at the, at the scene showed the suspect vehicle both entering and exiting the Pheasant Run apartments in a short period of time. Uh, this vehicle matched the same description as the, uh, the, the Joliet shooting. By 8 p.m., law enforcement was able to identify the suspect vehicle uh, as a red Toyota Camry bearing license plate Q730412. Detectives utilized license plate readers exclusively to attempt to locate the vehicle. The suspect vehicle was known to be used by Joliet resident uh, Romeo Nance, who has an extensive <laughs> criminal history. Personnel with the Sheriff's Office began to focus on locating the suspect and his vehicle by conducting saturation patrols in known addresses where he's been known to, uh, where he was associated with. When the vehicle could not be located, detectives with the Will County Sheriff's Office set up surveillance on the 2200 block of West Acres in Joliet in hopes that the vehicle would return to the residence. When the vehicle could not be located uh, and the vehicle's movements were no longer active, as a matter of public safety, the Will County Sheriff's Office released the identity of that suspect vehicle. It was at this point that we believe that Mr. Nance had fled the Will County area and was no longer a danger to the public. Detectives with the Will County Sheriff's Office went to uh, 2212 West Acres to contact the registered owner of the suspect vehicle. Detectives received no response at that residence. Knowing that the residence across the street was also known to be occupied by Romeo Nance, they went to that residence as well. It was at that time that they noticed blood coming, uh, blood located on the front of the door and, and fresh gunshot wounds to the door. Uh, detectives, uh, under exigency circumstances, made entry into the home and located two, two deceased individuals. The Joliet police were contacted at that time by detectives. Once Joliet arrived on scene, a team of uh, officers from the Will County Sheriff's Office and the Joliet Police Department went to the other address across the street at uh, 2212 West Acres and discovered five more deceased individuals. All available law enforcement resources, including the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the United States Marshal Service were being utilized to locate Romeo Nance and the suspect vehicle. Shortly before 6 p.m., members of the Will County Sheriff's Office who were coordinating with the U.S. Marshals advised that Romeo Nance was believed to be traveling in the state of Texas. By around 8 p.m., a helicopter had located the suspect vehicle on I-35, and Texas law enforcement was mobilizing additional resources to stop the vehicle. The Will County Sheriff's Office learned that the suspect, Romeo Nance, pulled his vehicle into the gas station in Natalia, Texas. Task Force officers with the United States Marshals Service uh, observed Mr. Nance armed with a firearm fleeing from the vehicle. It's at that time they gave chase to him. He rounded the corner around the gas station and decided to take his life. As a reminder, these investigations are still in their infancy and detectives are still gathering additional information and evidence must be uh, processed by crime labs. We know there may be many questions that you may have regarding this case and motives and circumstances involving this incident. 
Many cases like this, we may never know the truth or the motives behind these senseless killings. So many agencies were involved in bringing this case to a conclusion. The Will County Sheriff's Office would like to thank the Joliet Police Department, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the United States Marshal Service, the Texas Department of Public Safety, the Texas Rangers, and many other agencies associated to the U.S. Marshal Service uh, that were uh, task force officers on it. Mr. Nance's reign of terror in our communities in Will County is now over. With so much sadness that surrounds these incidents, it is time for our communities to come together and heal. Thank you very much. We will take a few brief questions um, and let me echo the comments by uh, Chief Evans and Deputy Chief Jungles that this is uh, a very active investigation still despite what occurred last evening in Texas. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. We do know right now that there was a, a family relationship between the two residents, and we do know that um, Nass was, uh, 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 Nance was related to uh, the occupants of, of both residents. As, as to exactly what type of relationship there was uh, within the family, uh, right now we're still sorting through that. Was he related to all of the victims that were there? As we could tell right now, he was related to uh, if not all, uh, a vast majority of the people within their within the uh, the residents, both residences. And the first shootings were those subjects to them, or it, it does appear at this point that the uh, shooting that Will County Sheriff's handled and the shooting that the Joliet Police Department handled were uh, separate from this particular investigation. Uh, we don't know; those seem to us to be more random in nature. There doesn't appear to be any nexus between the two shootings outside of uh, our primary location and the 2200 block of West Acres. I have not heard that. I can't speak to that uh, prior to the events that took place in Texas. Um, I can't speak. Our detectives were uh, seeking and, and gained uh, an arrest warrant for Nance for those charges. And then we were uh, pretty much right simultaneously. We were notified uh, of the events that took place in Texas. Ma'am, uh, there's still an, an ongoing investigation uh, with the coroner, and uh, that would be probably a better question to ask the coroner, but I think in due time she'll be able to reach those names. Uh, right now those names are not going to be available. We believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, we do believe that the, the shootings at the 2200 block were the original shootings and then the two random shootings took place shortly thereafter. Yeah, we can't get inside his head. Uh, we just don't have any, uh, any clue as to why he did what he did. Well, I mean, it was still an active investigation, and we were still trying to tie up a lot of loose ends uh, from some of the technology we employed and some of the assistance from other agencies. We were able to determine at least that we, we had a strong suspicion that he had left the area. And the second one, too, uh, Deputy Chief Jungles, um, knowing that you guys were able to go in the for the state this surveillance, why was it until they started to go back in the West Acre house that 
No, Joliet, Joliet was 100 percent aware that we were doing surveillance on the residents because we, we had established that both our shooting and their shooting that occurred uh, during the, uh, you know, around 4.30-ish were connected. So once we, once we were able to determine that and tried to locate the vehicle, once we weren't able to locate the vehicle, we were just waiting for it to come home, and that's when we set up the surveillance. Could you repeat that? Why was there a, that four hour gap between the end of the surveillance and the discovery of the bodies that we know was now the, the, we, I guess uh, we had, since about, eight, eight, since about 8 p.m. that evening, we were doing saturation patrols throughout the area. So we never, we never left eyes on the house, but we never had someone posted up there. So when, what we did is once we couldn't locate the vehicle and all the leads were uh, kind of dead for the evening, we, we set up on the house and, and that's when we decided, okay, there's been no movement on the vehicle, we have not uh, seen it on any of the LPR cameras, and that's when we decided to try to make contact with the homeowner because we wanted to get that information out to the public that this vehicle may be on the loose somewhere in another jurisdiction. That is correct. Mm -hmm. I know you said money wasn't taken in the shooting of the 28-year-old, uh, the fatal shooting. Was anything taken at, at any point in these murders? Uh, not in ours, no. How well known is the suspect of law enforcement? Is there any information about the law Any information about the suspect? Yeah, uh, that, that information I, I don't have access to right now. Chief Evans, have police been involved in the past with the two murders of Wednesday and Wednesday and Wednesday? I can't answer that right now. But we were familiar with the addresses. What about the license plates? Uh, I think the photos that were circulated last night showed Texas license plates on the red Camry. Is that anything you guys know about yet, or is that still being under under investigation as far as how those may have ended up? On yeah, John. Uh, from what our investigation has revealed, we do think that he stopped at a mall someplace in Texas, and he was able to uh, steal some Texas license plates and put them on the vehicle to throw off law enforcement. So uh, that's what the theory is right now. He had no known connection as far as like family members or anybody in Texas? There. We haven't established that yet, so I, I couldn't answer it. But at this point, we don't believe he had any relatives or any connection to the state of Texas. I can't admit that. I can't tell you right now. We have not confirmed that yet. Okay. Everybody's good? Okay, again.